Okay, today we're going to do the painting of our 3D printed um, things. Um, I've got here a pair of Canada geese and a rabbit, a moose, a canoe. Um, and before we get started, you might want to make yourself a gadget. If you plan to do a lot of painting of 3D printing stuff or of metal minis, this is a great thing to have. And all it is, you can buy these little bobbins at Michael's in their wood pieces department. And I've just glued them onto a scrap piece of wood. I extended the holes in them using a drill press or a hand drill. This way I can stick my pieces in here. Now my little animals are just held on with sticky tack, which you just fasten onto the end like that. And it gives them a good safe place to dry without running into each other. I've left the dowels, as you can see, okay? I've left the dowels fairly long because I like to have lots to hold on to. So, we're actually going to put those animals aside for a while and we're going to start with our canoe. Now, I'm using ceram coat and mudstone. as the inside of my canoe. Now, I don't know what kind of plastic this is that the uh, 3D printed PVL or PLV or something like that. Um, but it takes paint fairly well. I'm only painting the inside because I want the outside to be a different color. So I'm using mudstone for the interior. And I will restart the video when I've got the inside finished. Okay, we've got the inside of our canoe painted. Now, that's what one coat looks like. If you want to, um, to more completely cover up the gray, uh, put a second coat on. I'm going to leave mine like this because it, the, uh, the lines left by the 3D printing makes it almost look like a wood grain. Now, uh, I mentioned that uh, the, paint, the, the plastic takes paint very well, and I have never bothered to prime this. Um, it doesn't seem to chip off at all. So that's an advantage. If you get paint in a place that you really don't want to get paint, because it's plastic, what I do is just wet my finger, clean up the edges of the canoe with a wet finger. So you can see I've got a little bit of paint on there. Okay, and now I've got a pretty pristine outside of my canoe, which I am going to paint with a darker brown, my favorite <laughs> brown velvet paint. I'm also going to paint the seats brown. So there's a little bit of brown paint in my palette. And I'm going to use a very fine brush to do the, the, the seats. Do my very best not to get don't forget the edges of the seats as a very general rule of thumb when you're painting miniatures start with the lightest colors if you can I mean sometimes you can't but Start with the lightest colors and work up to the darker. Because although the dark will co cover the lighter very easily, it is not all that easy for, to cover a dark, a, a dark color with a lighter color.
Okay, there's the inside with my seats. Now I'm going to paint the outside. I'm going to switch to a slightly larger paintbrush. Since this is not exactly precision painting. Try and keep your hands as clean as possible. So she says as she paints her thumb so that you don't transfer your paint colors one onto the other. Okay, now I'm going to put this upside down to dry using my clean hand. Just put it down there. And if there's any touch-up to be done on the two ends, I will do that after it's completely dried. Now, while you've got while you've got your medium brown and your mudstone out, let's paint our moose. But before we paint it, when you get a 3D model, take a real good look at it. Because you will notice that there are little threads in some cases. Now, you can use scissors, but this plastic sands pretty well. Now, if you, I don't know if you can see it. It's pretty tiny, but there is a thread of plastic right there and underneath the mouth. Now, the reason you get these little shreds is because a 3D printer cannot print onto nothing. It has to have some kind of a support. So for things that stick out, in the case of our moose, the horns, the ears, the stomach, because the 3D printer will start with four little dots, which are the four feet, and it'll come up until it gets to here. And then you see that little piece hanging down there. It'll try and print that next on that layer. But of course, there's absolutely nothing for it to attach to. So the computer builds a little support that goes up to that point so that, and along the stomach so that it actually has something to print onto. So that's why you end up with little lines and things on your 3D model. Now, you can also carefully use an X-Acto knife to cut plastic to carve it in effect if there are some pieces that you don't like okay so that looks that looks pretty clean now okay so we are going to wash our brush out I'm using the bigger brush for this and we're using our rule of painting the lighter colors first I'm going to use the mudstone to paint the antlers. Now, actually, it's quite important you do not do a second coat on this because the horns of a, of a moose look kind of, uh, they're not all one color, but the variations are quite slight. By only putting one coat on the horns, you achieve that look of multiple colors. You can also choose to do a wash on them at a later point if you really want to get picky. Um, but I find it looks pretty realistic just to paint them. So this is Ceramcoat Mudstone that I'm using. But any kind of a, a, I don't know what you'd call this, a dark beige, a light brown. Um, in one of the other acrylic paints like Americana or um, 
would recommend Martha Stewart, but any acrylic paint anyway. Um, okay, so you've got your horns painted. Okay, now we're just going to wash our brush out. And we're going to start with the brown velvet. So paint the entire mousse in brown velvet. We're going to be using a dry brushing technique with a different color of brown and of course black to highlight the parts of it that are important like the hooves, the eyes, the nostrils. Uh, but the mousse itself is pretty well all brown. Um, we will be using a, a little bit of a wash of a, of a pink to do the inside of the ears, so you don't really have to paint those, although it's easier sometimes to just paint them and forget about them. Okay, I'll come back when I finish painting the moose brown. Okay, we've now got our brown moose with mudstone horns. And the next thing we have to do, most moose have kind of stockings. Um, in other words, their lower legs are lighter. Their hooves are actually about the same color as their antlers. So what we're gonna do here Let's tip our moose upside down. Oh dear, and he's not completely dry. Oh well. And we're going to paint his feet mudstone. We're also then going to use a dry wash up their legs, up his legs, because this is definitely a male moose. Um, when I first started researching moose for this project, um, because I, I, right from the beginning, I knew I wanted a moose peering out from behind the outhouse. So, of course, the question becomes, how big is a moose? Well, a moose, an adult male moose, can stand eight feet to the top of their horns, uh, about six feet to the shoulder. So they're a huge animal. Okay, so we've got our hooves painted mudstone. Now we're going to start dry brushing. So we'll get a little bit of paint on our brush, get most of it off, starting from the hooves. Just lighten up the legs a little bit. Okay, so you see how the leg is just now a little bit lighter? four legs that way. The light lighter part of a moose comes to just sort of just above the knee. Like that. Can you see that? Okay. Now moose are not an even brown all over. They are darker in places, so I'm using a dark burnt umber as my dark brown. Shake it up. That's way too much paint, but anyway, because I am going to be dry brushing here. Now, where do we dry brush? We're going to dry brush the wattle, darken that down. We're going to darken his face down a bit. And we're going to darken all the way down his back 
and over his hump. We're going to just darken it down a bit, give it some texture. And you can use the paint almost full strength right along his back. But start then dry brushing it to blend it into the lighter color. Okay, so you've got a moose with a darker back, a darker face, and darker horns. Okay, so now he's starting to look like a real moose. Now we are going to do the final step, which is the facial details. Those are done in black. And you will need your fine paintbrush for this. Okay. Come here, Mr. Moose. Just putting a dot where the eyes are, and you're going to just highlight the mouth and the nostrils. I've got quite a bit of black paint on there. It looks like he's grinning at me. I'm going to use a bit of my brown velvet to cover up the fact that I drew the line for his mouth and nose a little too thick. Okay, you can go back and forth between the two colors till you get it to your liking. Okay, here's our finished moose. Okay, now when you're painting a moose, it's not a very difficult thing to paint. When you're painting a canoe, it's even less difficult. When you're painting a Canada, oh dear. When you're painting a Canada goose, I just dropped my moose into the brown paint, so he's now got brown paint on the end of his antlers. So I better repair that while I'm still realizing I've done it. Just drop more mudstone on it. Okay, now I'll try and put him on one side where he won't get knocked over into the paint. There, put him up there. Okay, now when you are painting a moose, as I said, it's very simple. They're basically brown with lighter feet and lighter horns. When you're painting a Canada goose, they have a very specific pattern. So I've included in your kit a painting diagram. It looks like this. Okay, so that's what a Canada goose looks like. Now most people just think of them as black, but they actually have a white, off-white underbelly, a black tail, charcoal gray through here fading to what it mudstone, a black head, neck, with the white, iconic white stripe. So this is going to be kind of tricky to do. We're going to start with the white lighter colors and then work our way through to the other colors. Um, what is going to be particularly tricky is trying to put these little ends on the feathers. So let's start. So we've already got out mudstone and I'm going to, because the goose is very small, I'm going to use my smallest paintbrush. And we'll start with the standing goose. Okay, so the first color that we're going to do 
is white. Okay, so where we want to be white is from the back of his legs. rump and let's just swing it up towards the front like that and we'll do the same on the side just bringing it up towards the front okay now let's switch over to mudstone don't bother about cleaning your brush and the mudstone is going to go all the way up the chest to where that black head starts. Can you see that? Okay. So I've got my, my little goose sitting in the in my holder. Now the next color we need is gray. I'm actually going to just put it in the same container as the black. I'll just use different sides of it. Okay. So now we're going to do the gray, which is his wings. I'm starting to get the shading in there, the different colors of the Canada Goose. And this is when our goose is really going to start to come alive. There are two things on a Canada Goose that are black. One are his feet. And one is his head. Try and get a really nice clean line where the head and the neck meet. Because that's what it's like on a real bird. Now that goose, as you can see, stands about uh, let me see. About five eighths of an inch to the top of his head, which you would think would be quite big. But if you've ever been up close to a Canada goose, they are a good two feet, two and th two to three feet tall. So somewhere between half an inch and three quarters of an inch is the size of a full-grown Canada goose. You sure don't want one mad coming after you. Okay, there's our there's our goose. Looking pretty good. Now we're gonna have to let him dry before we put the white stripe on him. So I'm gonna put him back in the container and I'm gonna get out Mrs. Goose. Now Mr. and Mrs. Goose are, are the same colors. Okay. 
Okay, so I will start again with my white to do her underneath her tail. Um, just a word to the wise, don't worry too much about getting her um, underneath part because she's going to be buried in a nest. Okay, so we get her underneath her white part. Now we're going to get some mudstone to do her chest and lower neck. On Mr. Goose, I forgot to do this, but actually the upper part of the tail is black. I'm just going to put a little bit of black in there. I'm a terrible painter. I hope you paint better than I do. Okay, now we're going to use our gray to paint her the her back and her upper wings. Okay. Okay, looking like a goose. And we'll take our black and we will paint her head. Now, I'm not going to worry about their eyes because of the simple fact that their eyes are black. And other than a shiny spot in the black, that's all you're going to see. So now we've got to let her dry before we can do her white spot. And while Boyle here is drying, I'm going to just do his upper, his upper tail feathers. Okay, there's our goose so far, looking pretty much like a Canada goose. Okay, so I'm going to take a break for a few minutes and let the geese dry. Okay, hopefully these geese are dry enough now that we can paint the white strip on their cheeks. Now again, this needs a very fine paintbrush and a check at the picture. The stripe goes right at the curve of their cheek up to about where their ear would be if they had an ear. So we will start There we have a Canada Goose. Okay, so I'm going to put him aside to dry and get Mummy Goose out. And let's paint a... stripe on her. There's 
Goose, Mummy Canada Goose, sitting quietly on her nest, which we will build in the next operation. Um, these geese came out very well, just the way they are. I'm not going to worry about trying to put the, that little fine feather detail on them. Um, they're clearly Canada geese. So, we'll call it a day with that, and next state is landscaping.